Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for THV 11 News at noon. I'm Jordan Taylor. Here's what we're working on today. Concerns continue as Hurricane Idalia makes its way offshore. We'll have more on what officials are watching for in just a few minutes. Plus, as we head into the Labor Day weekend, there's good news for many hitting the road for one last summer trip. How cheap filling up could be a little later. And a huge weekend in Little Rock as the Hogs get ready to kick off the season at War Memorial Stadium. At 12.07, we're taking a look at the celebration happening tonight. And whatever it may be planned today may be the perfect day to do it. Meteorologist Scott Cover back me up by telling everyone how nice today is. You know what, Journey? We don't have to tell anyone how nice it is. If anyone has even stepped outside for a brief moment, you know just how nice it is today. I think, in fact, this is probably going to be the nicest day of this week, even though we've seen some pretty pleasant conditions here at the noon hour. Temperatures look like this 83 currently in the capital city. We're at 79 still in Clinton and Searcy. I don't know the last time at the noon hour we had temperatures still in the 70s. It's certainly been several weeks minimally. 77 still in Batesville, 84 Camden, 81 right now in Mina. So it feels good out there temperature wise. Our humidity is rather low and our satellite and radar shows most of us enjoying some beautiful blue skies out there this afternoon. A couple of stray clouds from Mina, Fort Smith and Fayetteville. Aside from that, we're in good shape. The rest of the day looks like this, a high of 89 degrees expected under that mostly sunny sky. It's going to be pretty dry out there. We continue to have that northeasterly wind pumping in some drier, less humid air, which has felt great over the last couple of days. And I think that will continue through tomorrow. Let's call it delightful, if you will. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Our temperatures are going to rise. Our humidity levels increase heading into your Labor Day weekend. And if there's any good news, I know we need some rain and we might not necessarily want it on our holiday weekend. There is a slight chance. I'm going to let you know who and when has the best chance coming up in your full seven day forecast. All right. Thank you, Scott. In national news, residents in Florida's Big Bend region are returning home today after a Category 3 hurricane slammed ashore Wednesday morning and then quickly moved north. Jared Hill has the latest from Moorhead City, North Carolina. Idalia arrived in the Carolinas as a tropical storm, but with enough punch to flood streets and topple trees. That car is flying! In Goose Creek, South Carolina, intense winds lifted this car right off the ground. The local police chief said two people escaped with only minor injuries. Here in Moorhead City on the coast of North Carolina, it's not just the wind, but also the water that's a concern. There are flash flood warnings up and down the eastern part of the state. Idalia left its biggest mark in Florida after making landfall along the Big Bend area of the Gulf Coast Wednesday morning. Oh my gosh! The canopy at a gas station in Perry, Florida was no match for the storm's 125 mile per hour winds. You want to live on the water, you got to put up with it, you know? There's massive damage in Horseshoe Beach. Many homes in the small coastal community are destroyed. Trees and debris everywhere but everyone appears to be okay. Okay, what matters is what I'm holding right here, okay? It's just material stuff. At one point, water stretched as far as the eye could see, and many storm victims now have to wait for it to recede before they begin putting their lives back together. Jared Hill, CBS News, Moorhead City, North Carolina. And while the storm has moved away from Florida and Georgia, tens of thousands of people from Florida to the Carolinas are still without power. Crews and volunteers from Arkansas are in Florida helping those people affected. The Category 3 hurricane again made landfall on Wednesday morning, causing thousands of outages. 60 line workers from electric cooperatives of Arkansas are looking to help the hardest hit areas and local Red Cross volunteers are ready to assist as well. The co-op was stationed in Alabama last night and expects to start working in Florida today. We don't know their system. We don't know the roads. We don't know where to go. So we're going to have a leader from their organization to show us where to go and what to do. And basically they'll say, OK, start at this line and this whole system is yours. You take care of it. The crew hit the road early this morning to assist in the city of Madison, Florida. And as Idalia continues up the eastern seaboard, the White House says resources are on the way. President Joe Biden has been talking to the governors of Florida, Georgia and South Carolina, offering whatever assistance they may need to deal with the disaster. 
Meanwhile, House Republicans have criticized the president's response to the wildfire in Hawaii. Congressman James Comer announced a new investigation with a statement saying the response by the federal, state and local officials to the catastrophic wildfire in Maui raises serious questions and Americans, especially those impacted by the tragedy, deserve answers. I'm happy to testify on what the federal role was in this process. On the ground in, Hawaii. in response, the Biden administration says they intend to spend $95 million to improve Hawaii's electric grid to limit damage during future events. Another crew of helpers are headed to Louisiana and they headed out yesterday to help the state battle wildfires. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders authorized the Arkansas National Guard to send active duty personnel to aid in the wildfire battle. 12 crew, crew members loaded up into two helicopters carrying buckets to transport water. The crew left yesterday around noon and will return next Tuesday. Concerns rise over the health of Senate Republican Mitch McConnell during a press conference in Kentucky yesterday. During a Q&A, McConnell suddenly froze, standing speechless in front of reporters. Now, back in July, a similar incident happened at another press conference. It also comes less than six months after the 81-year-old senator was hospitalized after taking a fall. The episodes have raised questions about McConnell's role as Senate Republican leader. And it was a packed house last night as Mayor Frank Scott Jr. hosted his public meeting for his tax proposal. This was the last meeting Little Rock residents could speak to the mayor in person about their thoughts on his proposal. Mayor Scott made his final push last night after a month of meetings. The one cent sales tax would fund 60 million, 60 million of capital improvements. Funds will be broken down towards public safety, infrastructure, parks and rec, and the port. Although Mayor Scott says the money is necessary for the growth of Little Rock, Vice Mayor Kathy Webb says the proposal still needs work. And while you never have something that's perfect, I think it's premature, I think it's flawed. And what I heard tonight and what I've heard from my constituents for the last six months is that we've got to fix 911. The mayor says he's making final adjustments to the proposal before he brings it to the board, including more changes for public infrastructure. Tomorrow morning, Little Rock City leaders will decide whether to put a sales tax proposal on the November ballot. Well, Central Arkansas is buzzing with excitement as Little Rock prepares for this weekend's first Razorback game. And ahead of kickoff, Park Plaza Mall is hosting a big tailgate tonight. Local restaurants and caterers will be there offering up their tailgating and football party favorites. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. at the mall's Level 1 Food Court. Tickets are $15 at the door. And this weekend, we're celebrating War Memorial Stadium's 75th anniversary. This is what it looked like every step along the way. It made news all over the state. It was finished in September of 1948, and it was only fit fitting that it be Christian with a Razorback game. Uh, Arkansas played their first game here. They played uh, Abilene Christian, beat them 40 to six. It was, a, it, was a, it was a big day, and here we are 75 years later, and we're gonna have another big day uh, this Saturday. Well, tonight, Craig O'Neill sits down with Marty Rowell, director of the Division of Arkansas Heritage, to celebrate the stadium's anniversary. Tune in at 10 o'clock right here on THV 11. Well, if you're hitting the road this Labor Day weekend, you're going to want to save as much as you can at the gas pump. we got some good news for you after the break. Scott? I'm afraid in your weather forecast, I don't have the best of news. Now, today's weather is fantastic, but as we all know, all good things must come to an end. The cool temperatures, the low humidity, that's what I'm talking about. So now the question is, how hot is it going to be this Labor Day? I've got that answer and a preview of when you might expect a couple of raindrops coming up when THB 11 News at noon returns.